Good afternoon, friends. So I've had a few of you asking me for cooking videos. So today, since it's a very cold day, I want to make some soup. Um, my body's craving vegetables. And yeah, so I'm gonna be making a vegetable soup. I love to cook in my Dutch oven here. Uh, it's just wonderful. So we take that, oh, it looks like it needs another clean out. Let me clean that real quick. Okay, so my base ingredients are probably everybody's base ingredients, which are onions, celery, and carrots. I myself am not a fan of garlic. I like a tiny bit of it, but I don't like, um, I don't really even want to taste the flavor of it. Like, I'm cool if, if uh, the oil tastes like it a little bit. But what I do first, and I... I think that soups taste so much better when you do this is if you kind of like um, fry your vegetables vegetables a tad bit before you just dunk them all in in some kind of broth um, so I just use a tad bit of olive oil about a um, maybe a half a tablespoon and then like a tablespoon of butter and I will Caramelize my onions, um, take those out, uh, and then I'll add my carrots and my celery and cook those for a couple minutes. So, let me cut all my vegetables. Okay, I've got my onions all chopped up. I just roughly chop them. Doesn't really matter. And then they go into the pot. You see into the pot with a small tab of butter. Um, going to be fabulous. So I'm going to be putting, it's all vegetables I'm going to be putting in here. I'm debating on whether to put some beans in it. Like great, great northern white, great northern beans, great northern beans. These are good. Um... I do like to add a tad bit of tomato paste into my base, um, just because it makes it taste really good. You can add rice or beans or noodles if you want. I'm not much of a noodle fan in this type of soup, um, but definitely gonna be adding potatoes. So it's gonna be a really hearty, really, I even might add this uh, butternut squash that I bought. Um, I think I'm going to do that because that looks pretty good. So yeah, we're going to have a very hearty dinner tonight. Well, it's just going to be me by myself, but I'll probably offer Mark a bowl, you know, since he's, he's been staying at his house for the last couple days because, you know, that's what happens when you lie to me over and over and over. But I love him and I can't help but keep letting him back because I fucking love him. Like, what do you do when you really love somebody? Like, he's the person. Like, I've never loved a man like I've loved this man. It's crazy. Um, So, I've just been staying to myself, focusing on my work. Um, Let me show you real quick my, what I've been working on today. Um, This is a new little house that I'm doing. But then I also started to do, oh look, there's Tina. I also started to do, you guys know I, I really like to do these little um, egg or walnut shell crafts. And I found this one, it was already eaten. It was eaten by a squirrel on both sides. So I took my Dremel tool and I did a little more. And then I made this little teeny tiny house. Oh, it's so small. There it is. I made that teeny tiny house so we could put in there. Oh, it's going to be adorable, you guys. Um, but yeah. Another very important tip for cooking soups is um, to salt every, salt and pepper every layer. Don't wait till the end to add your seasonings because then you're going to have to, you're not going to, either you're going to add too much or not enough. Um, so I like to, so like, you put your onions in, you salt them. You put your, you know, you let them cook. And then you put your next layer in, which is your carrots and celery. You salt them and pepper them. 
um, and it just it it saves you a lot of time and guesswork when it comes to soups and stews. So um, you can see here I've got my two layers, my two layers in there looking delicious, and. You don't have to soak these beans um, since I'm going to be cooking this for most of the day. I think they will be fine because there is directions on here that says to a quick a quick soak by boiling them for two minutes and letting them stand for an hour. So I think if you can, um, obviously you have to rinse these and wash them and stuff before you put them in your thing. I'm also going to be putting fire roasted diced tomatoes because they bring a really good deep flavor to the broth. And broths, I always use a, a cooking stock. You don't ever want to use just a broth because broth doesn't really have any flavor. So I like to use bone broth. Bone broth is good. Um, or just, just your red... Um, your, your regular stock. Bone broth is really good though because it has um, all of the flavors of, of everything. So now I just gotta cut up this butternut squash so we can get that in there. Actually, I'm gonna do some research on this because I've actually never eaten butternut squash and I don't wanna ruin my whole soup by adding this. Um, but, Okay, I'm going to add, I decided to opt out of the butternut squash because I just, I'm going to make it a soup all of its own. Um, so now we're going to take another tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of flour and we are going to make a thickener for our soup. You guys, right there. This is called a roux. Thank you, uh, Food Network, for teaching me this trick. And then once all that is in there and melted, I keep my flour in this uh, cereal or pasta thing. Once all that's melted, then you add just a little bit of flour. I don't measure this kind of stuff. I just kind of eyeball things. Because with cooking, you don't have to be exact. You could just eyeball stuff. <laughs> as long as you're kind of exact, I think you'll be okay. So we put our roux in there. And we also want to put just a dab of tomato paste. Just mix that all around and let that flour cook for about a minute or so because you want to get all the the um, flour flavor out of the flour. You want to cook that away. And you'll be left with a beautiful, thick, thickening agent. And then at this point, we add our... We can start adding everything else, um, the broth, the except for the potatoes. You don't you don't want to cook the potatoes yet. You want to add the potatoes probably about an hour before the soup is done, um, depending on how you like your potatoes. I like my potatoes to be at the point of where they're falling apart because they almost add a thickness to the soup itself. I like to cook my soups and stews. I like my soups generally to be more stew-like, just thicker. Um, I wish I had some cabbage. Some cabbage would be really good in this. Uh-oh. Oh, this says it's good. Oh, this is probably just congealed because it's bone. Bone broth, that's why. And 
then we're going to add just a bowl full of water. And you might have to, well, let's add a little bit more. Um, you will have to keep an eye on on the liquid level of this. Put you guys up a little further. Um, you might want to. Uh, you have to look at the level of this and make sure. Unless you have the lid on, um, then the, it won't evaporate. But um, yeah. So we salt, and then we come over here. Let's get our beans out. Our beans and our tomatoes. Um, and then for spices, usually I, I like to do as many from the garden spices as I possibly have, which is like the rosemary and the thyme. So drain tomatoes. You don't even really have to drain these. I don't know why I did that. Hello, Tina. I know you want some love, but I'm in the middle of something right now. Um, and then I also, so I add oregano, rosemary, thyme, marjoram. It tastes really good in, um, in these types of stews or soups. And also... I'll do a little bit of garlic, a little bit of mustard powder, and um, a bay leaf. So our beans, we're gonna want to wash them first. You guys, I am so sorry for these terrible camera angles. Hold on, let me. Let me make you somewhat of a priority here. Okay, so we got our beans. <clears throat> we got our great northern beans. And you they you can get these in a can too, but um I just got these for some reason. I don't know. I I do weird things. I get things that I never normally get because sometimes I don't even know that the store has it. Tina, just waiting patiently for some love. Now that's where beans are. I really wish I had some cabbage. Because some cabbage would do really good in this. I love cabbage. I don't know, maybe it's like the Polish in me. <laughs> okay. In they go. And you guys, I think that's going to be it um, until it's time to put the potatoes in. So, uh, where's my bay leaves? Right here. Bay leaf. I'll take two of these babies and put it in there. Two bay leaves. And then at the end, let me see if I've got any more veggies. I'm gonna have to go to the store and get a can of peas and a can of corn because we're gonna need some peas and corn in there. Like, what's veggie soup without peas and corn, you know? Actually, let me just check my freezer to make sure I don't have any bags of veggies. I usually do. Yep, I do. Vegetable soup mix. Okay, you guys, the soup is done, and oh my god, it's so good. I've already started eating it, because I wanted to test it to make sure it was okay. Um, I did have to add a little bit more salt and pepper, just like I thought I would, but I'm going to show you how it looks. 
nice and it's not super thick to where it's just like goopy and also before you eat it if you don't know you want to take out that bay leaf you do not want to leave that bay leaf in there um you can see how much it cooked down though so it made it nice and thick and then i really like bread with um soup so i'm eating these um king's hawaiian sweet rolls with some butter and you guys this soup let me let me just let me just take a bite here with you guys real quick get you a little piece of bread so it's got all this yummy hearty delicious stuff in it super filling super healthy super flavorful because of the tomatoes and all the stuff we've put in there mmm 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 You know the food's good when the bitch got to dance. Mmm. Like those beans, they just add like a substance to it. So it doesn't just feel like you're eating fucking vegetables, you know? Because we're not rabbits. We don't survive off of vegetables only. But, like, I really like my soups, like, kind of peppery. And you guys, this is just the best meal to have on a cold winter day or night and you can eat this you can put this soup in the fridge and literally it just gets better it only gets better the longer it sits i promise you <laughs> i've made this soup a billion times and the recipe you can like you know switch things if you want the spices or the vegetables or add or subtract whatever just make it your own but the base, the soup base is the most important part. Like learning how to do a, like a thickener for your soup so it's not like watery. Um, learning how to let it cook down so it, it, it gets flavorful. Learning how to um, season as you go, you know, with your layers and letting it cook. This has been cooking for four hours. Four hours on low on the stove in a Dutch oven. Mmm. Y'all, I'm telling you, you'll never go back when you make a soup like this. This soup is so good. And you can make it so many different ways. You can make like a tortilla soup. Like all, it's so endless what you can do and what you can put in this. So have fun. Make you a cozy little soup and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I love you.